This is the NATO army, the Polish-speaking, French-speaking, English-speaking NATO army that invaded Russia at the command of NATO. You guys came in with the best you got. And it's pretty damn good. It was impressive. Um, but Abdi Eladanov has come in and he's impressive. Well, you know, this is a this is a serious thing. NATO invaded Russia. I, I, people, you got to understand that if a Russian, if the Russians went to Mexico and brought in Colombians and brought in Venezuelans and brought in Cubans, and next thing you know, 25,000 of them with the best equipment uh, organized, um, you know, crossed the, the border and captured Columbus, New Mexico in Pancho Villa part two, um, we'd be going to war against Mexico and we'd be going to war against Russia. You don't get to invade the United States and, and not expect to pay a price. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, as Inspector Scott Ritter has pointed out in his latest analysis, we delve deep into the most shocking developments from the front lines. As we traverse through this intricate and often bewildering conflict, it's crucial to remember the so-called Curse of Kursky, a name that has gained ominous significance over the past few days. This isn't just a battle for territory, it's a battle of wills, of strategies, and ultimately of survival. What we're witnessing is not just a series of skirmishes, but a titanic clash that may well define the course of this war. Our journey begins with a tactical update one that echoes the concerns raised by Inspector Scott Ritter in his latest assessment. Just days ago, Ukrainian forces initiated an unprecedented UAV of offensive penetrating deep into Russian airspace. The attack on Vonet Airport, though shrouded in ambiguity, sent shockwaves across the region. The very fact that such a breach occurred speaks volumes about Ukraine's resolve or perhaps their desperation. But it wasn't just about a single strike, this was a coordinated assault involving hundreds of UAVs, each one a calculated risk, each one a statement of defiance. As these UAVs swarmed across Russia's northeastern territories, they were accompanied by a relentless barrage of missiles targeting key infrastructure, military positions, and civilian areas alike. It's important to understand the implications of such an attack. By launching this massive operation, Ukraine is placing a bet a bet that the northeast front could be the tipping point in this war. But this isn't a simple gamble, it's an all-in move. They are committing every available resource, every ounce of their strategic capacity, to break through what they perceive as the weak points in Russia's defenses. The sheer scale of this operation suggests a level of desperation that cannot be ignored. It's as if Ukraine believes that if they can make a dent here, it might change the trajectory of the conflict, but as we'll see, this bet comes with enormous risks. But. For every action, there is a reaction. Let's now examine how Russia has responded to this bold, if not reckless, Ukrainian gambit. In the face of Ukraine's aggressive posture, Russia has not remained idle. Far from it. Explosions and plumes of smoke have become a familiar sight in Kiev, Sumy, and Odessa as Russian ballistic missiles strike with unerring precision. As noted by Inspector Scott Ritter, these aren't just retaliatory strikes, they are a clear message, a demonstration of Russia's overwhelming firepower and its ability to reach deep into Ukrainian territory wherever and whenever it chooses. Each missile that finds its target serves as a reminder of that. Despite Ukraine's best efforts, Russia retains the upper hand in this conflict. Let's break down these strikes. In Kiev, the capital that has become the symbol of Ukrainian resistance, missile strikes have caused significant disruptions, targeting both military and civilian infrastructure. The impact on Sumy, another key region, has been equally devastating. Russia's ballistic missiles have not just hit their targets, they've instilled a sense of dread that permeates through every level of Ukrainian society. The strikes on Odessa, a critical port city, further demonstrate Russia's strategy of crippling Ukraine's logistics and supply lines, leaving the country increasingly isolated and vulnerable. What's particularly telling is the precision of these strikes. Russia isn't just launching missiles blindly, each one is a calculated move, aimed at weakening Ukraine's strategic capabilities while minimizing unnecessary collateral damage. This level of precision is a stark contrast to Ukraine's more scattered approach, where the desperation to make an impact often leads to more indiscriminate and less effective strikes. As the smoke clears from these targeted strikes, we turn our attention skyward, where the battle for air superiority continues to intensify. In the skies above this war-torn land, the battle for air superiority rages on with relentless intensity. 
a recent and tragic event underscores the high stakes of this aerial conflict. A Ukrainian MiG-29, part of what remains of Ukraine's beleaguered air force, was shot down over Odessa by a Russian MiG-31, a stark reminder of Russia's continued dominance in the air. The downing of this aircraft isn't just another statistic, it's a symbol of the growing imbalance in air power that is increasingly tilting in Russia's favor. The Ukrainian pilot, whose death has been solemnly noted in the military obituaries, represents yet another loss in a campaign that is proving increasingly costly for Ukraine. But the MiG-29 wasn't the only aircraft to fall from the sky in recent days. Russia's air defenses have also claimed a Ukrainian Su-27 and a Mi-8 helicopter, both crucial assets in Ukraine's dwindling fleet. The significance of these losses cannot be overstated. With every aircraft that is lost, Ukraine's ability to defend its airspace diminishes. The skies, once contested, are now becoming increasingly hostile for Ukrainian pilots, who must navigate not only the physical dangers, but also the psychological toll of fighting against a superior force. This escalation in air combat highlights the broader strategic implications. As Ukraine's air force is gradually whittled down, their capacity to support ground operations and defend against Russian air superiority is severely compromised. The implications for the broader conflict are clear with each aircraft lost, Ukraine's strategic position becomes more precarious, making it increasingly difficult for them to maintain their current defensive lines, let alone launch any significant counteroffensives. As the skies over Ukraine continue to burn, let's now take a sobering look at the cumulative losses sustained in this brutal conflict. As we close out another week of relentless warfare, the numbers are nothing short of staggering. On August 16th alone, Ukrainian forces suffered a devastating loss of 2,255 personnel. A number that, when put into context, reveals the sheer scale of the human cost. This isn't just another day in the war. It marks one of the top five most catastrophic days for Ukraine since the conflict began. To put this in perspective, the daily toll is now consistently exceeding 2,000, a figure that would cripple any military, let alone one that is already stretched thin across multiple fronts. But it's not just the loss of life that is so alarming. The destruction of military hardware is equally catastrophic. In a single day, Ukraine lost 55 combat vehicles, including four tanks, one of which was taken out in Avdivka, a region that is fast becoming a symbol of Ukrainian resilience, albeit one that comes at a tremendous cost. The loss of 27 artillery systems, including self-propelled guns and a multiple launch rocket system, further cripples Ukraine's ability to sustain long-range attacks or defend against Russian advances. And then there are the UAVs minus 52 in total, with 19 managing to penetrate deep into Russian territory. While this might seem like a tactical success, the reality is that these incursions are becoming increasingly rare as Russian air defenses adapt and evolve. The downing of an NTPQ-50 antenna alongside the destruction of 3S-300 air defense system launchers and a vital radar station marks yet another significant setback for Ukraine's defensive capabilities. As Scott Ritter has warned, these losses are not sustainable in the long run and could spell disaster for Ukraine's military strategy. But the numbers don't tell the full story. Let's zoom into the specific regions and the unfolding battles that have contributed to these staggering losses. In the Sumy region alone, Ukraine suffered a record-breaking loss of 420 troops, overshadowing even the Kharkiv front. Avdiivka, a seemingly minor front line, saw its losses double, reaching a horrifying 635 in just one day. This small yet fiercely contested area has become a vortex of destruction, defying all expectations. As Scott Ritter has noted in his assessments, these areas are becoming the epicenters of Ukrainian suffering a direct consequence of the relentless pressure applied by Russian forces. It, what makes these numbers even more alarming is the broader strategic context. Sumy and Avdivivka are not just isolated hotspots, they are critical junctures in the wider conflict. The loss of 420 troops in Sumy represents more than just a numerical setback, it's a symbolic blow to Ukraine's morale and its ability to sustain operations in this strategically important region. Similarly, the staggering toll in Avdivivka reflects the intense and unforgiving nature of the fighting on the ground. The region's significance has grown out of proportion to its size as both sides pour resources into what has become a deadly battle of attrition. As we continue to monitor these developments, it's clear that the fighting in these regions is far from over. The question now is how long Ukraine can sustain these losses before it leads to a broader collapse of their defensive lines. As these fronts rage on, let's consider the broader implications and the strategic decisions driving this conflict. 
Ukraine's gamble on the Kursk front is as bold as it is dangerous. By pulling troops from critical areas like Zaporizhia, Avivka, and Ivka, and even Kherson, Ukraine has concentrated its forces in a high-stakes bid to break through. But this strategy bears all the hallmarks of a sacrifice play, a desperate attempt to inflict damage at the cost of their own survival. As Scott Ritter has highlighted, this is a move fraught with risk. By focusing so heavily on Kursk, Ukraine is leaving other critical areas vulnerable to Russian advances. The decision to pull troops from regions like Zaporizhia and Kherson, both of which are vital to Ukraine's overall defense strategy, suggests that Ukraine is willing to accept significant losses in these areas in exchange for a potential breakthrough in Kursk. But this is a dangerous game one that could backfire spectacularly if Ukraine is unable to secure a decisive victory in Kursk. The implications of this strategy are far reaching. If Ukraine succeeds in breaking through in Kursk, it could shift the momentum of the war in their favor. But if they fail, the consequences could be catastrophic. Not only would they have depleted their resources in a failed bid, but they would also have left other critical regions vulnerable to Russian advances. This is a gamble that could determine the fate of the entire war or high stakes game where the stakes are nothing less than the survival of the Ukrainian state. With each passing day, the stakes grow higher and the risks more profound. Let's consider the possible outcomes of this unfolding drama. As we watch this conflict unfold, one cannot help but question is Ukraine on the brink of a catastrophic collapse. With daily losses exceeding 2000 soldiers and their forces stretched thin across multiple fronts, the specter of defeat looms large. If Ukraine continues on this path, the repercussions could be felt not only on the battlefield, but across the entire geopolitical landscape. As Scott Ritter has observed, the situation is becoming increasingly dire. Ukraine's military is being pushed to its limits with no clear path to victory. The losses they are sustaining are not just unsustainable, they are indicative of a broader strategic failure that could lead to the collapse of the Ukrainian state. If Ukraine cannot find a way to stabilize the situation, they could be facing a defeat that would have far-reaching consequences, not just for Ukraine, but for the entire region. As we conclude, let's reflect on what this means for the broader conflict and the future of the region. In the end, as Scott Ritter has so aptly noted, the curse of Kursk may prove to be more than just a name. It's a symbol of the escalating cost of this conflict, a price paid in blood, steel, and shattered dreams. As we move forward, we'll continue to bring you the latest updates from this and other critical fronts. But one thing is certain the road ahead is fraught with peril, and only time will tell who will emerge from the shadows of this cursed battlefield.